Okay. Okay, I think we are live. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Wound Care Pro video series, where we dive into the world of wound care with Wound Care Pro founder, nurse practitioner, Anne Walsh. Anne is a highly respected authority in wound care, and she's here this week to share her insights on venous ulcers. Now, whether you're a healthcare professional or someone seeking to understand more about wound management, this episode is packed with valuable information. So let's welcome nurse practitioner Ann Walsh as we explore the causes, treatments, and prevention of venous ulcers. But I think, Ann, what do you, we should just talk about, I mean, you have arterial ulcers, you have general ulcers, and you have venous ulcers. What exactly are venous ulcers and how do they develop? Yeah, so venous leg ulcers, they used to be called venous stasis ulcers or the most common type of leg ulcer we see, like 80% of the leg ulcers are due to venous ins insufficiency. So there's a lot of factors that puts the person at risk, prolonged standing, prolonged sitting, sedentary lifestyles, obesity, pregnancy, you know, or somebody, you know, using uh, IV drug use, perhaps, you know, you get a damage to the veins could lead to an ulcer in the legs, um, edema, you know, and it just, um, you can get a bug bite if you're prone because you're edema and you have these other risk factors. And all of a sudden you have a wound and then uh, it's very difficult to heal without the proper interventions. And so how can someone differentiate between a venous ulcer and then other types of wounds? So usually it's located on the, right around the ankle, between the, you know, on the calf area, between the ankle and the knee, they, they call it the gator area. Um, usually those types of wounds are clean, they're not, you know, necrotic, like you might see with something gangrene or, you know, arterial. Um, like I said, the most common, we'll see a lot of edema. We'll see the skin maybe kind of a brownish color um, and just different signs like that. But you want to get the person into vascular to make sure before we treat them with compression therapy, because while it's a, it's a gold standard for venous leg ulcer and mixed venous and arterial, if somebody has more arterial disease, you don't want to compress, you know, those patients. So, um, but it, like I said, it's very common and you may see, the patient may report to you, oh, I've had this and it healed and it came back again. It's, it's a very high risk of recurrence. So a lot of times you'll know, okay, most likely this is venous, but before I do compression therapy, let me, me make sure. Yeah, no, that's interesting. That's a, a really interesting factor that you need to consider that if it's something that is not healing, then you really know that mm, there's something else going on, something vascular. It's not just this general surface wound. There's something deeper going on and there's a reason why it's not healing. It's not getting, would you imagine it's not getting the nutrients it needs or is it because the blood is pooling down there in the veins? And there's yeah, all the above. The blood is pooling down there. It's, it's the opposite of like, there's not enough blood getting there. The blood is there and needs help to come back. Venous return. So there's a problem with those veins. There's the valves and the veins supposed to help the blood come back. You know, and then they're just like, it's just pooling there. So the compression therapy helps send it back the right direction. But you got to make sure that it's venous before we um, go with that step. So what are the most common causes of venous ulcers? Yeah, so most of the time, you know, the person may have diabetes, hypertension, they're, um, like I said, sedentary lifestyle, or the type of work somebody does. They're on the feet all day. So all that, you know, compression, that uh, stress going on the legs, and it's like venous hypertension in your legs. So um, again, pregnancy, obesity, um, any injury to the leg, if somebody had a blood clot there, um, anything that would injure those valves that they're not able to do their jobs correctly. How prevalent are they? How, how prevalent are these venous ulcers in just the general population? I mean, worldwide, probably about 7 million or something, you know what I mean? But they're, they're yeah, just when we see wounds coming to us on the legs, like, like about 80% or due to venous in insufficiency. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah very common. And because the patient, like I said, usually has them for years. I've had patients who had them for 20 years. They'll heal. They don't like the compression therapy. So they'll stop that. And then the wound comes back again. So just their um, revolving doors, you know? Well, I think the good news is that aside from the compression therapy, just those compression socks, and and I do have some issues with vein, well, veins, especially when I'm flying. Um, I have a, a lot more problems. So I always wear the compression socks, but I, I mean, they are so uncomfortable. They're so hard to get on. It's literally like a half hour to get 
Uh, stockings yeah. on my foot. It's an entire production, but you know, and it is frontline treatment, right? So they have to try it for a certain amount of time to see if that makes a difference. Now, for example, in my dad's case, it actually made matters worse. So he ended up um, getting, I, I joke that he, he got his veins super glued. There are all kinds of, of, I don't know if you can go into some of the different uh, deep vein treatments that are available today to help make sure to close off some of those troubled veins that might be leading to venous ulcers. Yeah, I mean, because compression therapy is the gold standard. So if somebody doesn't want those compression wraps until the wound heals, then you get fitted for stockings. And there are some with a zipper, makes it a little easier to get on, but they're not easy. There are, you know, there's some kind of ablation therapy that could try to destroy that vein, that valve, and hopefully the vein will like fizzle away and then another vein will take up, take over, or like you say, some sort of glue that to seal that vein off if the person's a candidate for that. Um, so that's always an option as well. Thermal so and like thermal, you know, radio frequency and so. Mm -hmm. But they no longer have to strip, so-called strip. The yeah, vein. I think that may lead to other problems, but um, yeah. yeah. We had a doctor just on the other day that was talking about the veins and how um, they they there's duplicates, you know, for like in the tibial down. Uh, I keep wanting to use the technical terms, you know, between the knee and and the and the foot and the calf area. That for you have three main arteries that go down, and for each of the three, there are two veins is the way he described it. So he's like, there's a duplicate. So if you end up using one vein, you still have the other one right. that can be yeah. used for the return flow back to the heart. Absolutely. And, you know, our calf muscle helps, you know, put that blood back to our heart. So if we're not walking and we're sitting for prolonged periods of time, or again, not walking, we're not using that calf muscle and the blood just sort of just pools there and that could lead to problems. Yeah, that's not good. No, um, and it also it's genetic too. Some people, it runs in their family. So it just... There's modifiable factors and then a non-modifiable. And some call it, call the calf muscle the second heart. Because exactly. The heart of the leg. Yes. Exactly. So what symptoms should prompt someone to seek medical advice for a potential venous ulcer? Well, if they see the legs are swollen, maybe they'll get a little redness and, and all of a sudden maybe a blister forms and then a wound opens up. You definitely want to seek help to see, uh, make sure it's not an infection, first of all, and check the uh, vascular status. So which healthcare professionals are, are best suited to diagnose and treat venous ulcers? I imagine that there needs to be, that this one is is one of those that you do need a, a care team involved. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the primary physician may refer you to vascular or if they could do an ankle brachial index in their own office, which if you haven't heard of, it's a blood pressure you do in the arm and also in the leg and you compare. And then depending on the results of that, it'll prompt us, oh, there's arterial involvement here or not. And then we know whether we can use compression if it's not severe arterial disease. Um, we could use compression therapy to help heal that wound and then again, get you fitted for stockings or see if you're a surgical candidate. Mm -hmm. And what questions should patients ask their healthcare providers when diagnosed with a venous ulcer? I would just, you know, ask it like, what kind of compression therapy are we going to use? Um, you, need, you need obviously topical wound care. So it's going to depend on what's going on with the wound. If they're heavily draining, which sometimes we see, then you, know, you might need to get to a wound specialist to see what's the best treatment for that. Um, if it's more drier, you know, then there's other wound um, treatments for that. So the superficial treatments for venous ulcers, number one, of course, uh, compression therapy, um, whether hopefully I can find ones that have the zipper, right? Maybe yeah, well, a lot of times if you have a wound, we'll use a compression wrap. They used to use a four layer compression wrap. Now there's two layer ones that are easier for the clinician to do and you get the same amount of compression therapy. So, you know, we'll look at the wound and usually in those kits, there'll be a, a, a contact layer put on the wound and then mm. you have the compression wrap um, to put on there. That's done once or twice a week. And as you're healing and the swelling comes down, then you get fitted for stockings, you know, so when, once you're healed to hopefully um, use for prevention. And I, I would imagine that we've talked in previous episodes on the importance of using the right tools to clean right. and bandage the wound. Do you want to go through just some of those really quick, especially, you know, specifically for venous ulcers? Yeah, I mean, there's a high risk of infection. Anytime you have edema, you know, you have a high risk of getting cellulitis in the leg. And a lot of times it's recurrent. So you really want to get good cleansing going on, like, like the wound cleansers or, you know, you could use normal saline. Which is basically sodium chloride. 
um, depending on the wound itself, if it's draining a lot, there's silver dressings that are absorbent that could be used. There's foam dressings. If it's less drainage, there's like the non-adherent dressings, like zero form is one, adaptic. There's so many on the market, depending on what we're looking at, the honey products, um, and they could work up to seven days. You could leave them on while the um, compression bandage is in place. And we've talked before that it, it's not just a, a general New Zealand honey off the shelf. Yeah. You need yeah. to make sure that it's a medicinal grade honey that you're putting on your wound. Correct. And if you're getting a compression therapy, you know, wrap uh, you put on, you may have home care coming in so they could order the supplies for you and they'll get you the right product. Or if you're going to a wound center, they um, will get that for you. Now, how important is lifestyle modification in the management of venous ulcers? Yeah, I mean, when you're sitting on the couch or whatever, you want to get your legs elevated above the heart level if you can to help that venous return. You want to walk, you know, get some exercise, get that blood pumping, that calf muscle, um, lose weight if we're overweight, right? Um, smoking, if we smoke, try to quit that. If you have diabetes, try to get that under control. Otherwise, you're more risk for infection. So a lot of things we could do that are modifiable, but certain things were at risk being female, we're more at risk for venous leg ulcer. So certain things we can't change but there's a lot we can. Are there or any new- You don't want salty food, so we're like holding on to all this fluid. Oh no, that's that's a really important one. Yes. Are there any new advancements in the treatment of venous ulcers that you're excited about? Or, you know, conversely, I mean, are there any gaps in which we really need new advancements that you're saying, hey, entrepreneurs, focus on this, focus mm -hmm. on this. I mean, it'd be great. Like you said, the, the compression stockings are so hard to get on. So if there was something easier, that's always good. And they're constantly coming out with stuff. Um, a lot of new topical things like, um, you know, skin grafts, skin substitutes, uh, topical oxygen, you know, if things don't, the normal things don't work, but the compression therapy is, uh, you know, the way to go. And hopefully if there's something easier for us to apply to, because I could see patients, oh, it's healed. They stop it and it comes back again. And we don't want that revolving door. Yeah. No. So how does Wound Care Pro assist healthcare professionals in managing venous ulcers more effectively? Well, there's a section on it. I give a um, description of what it is, what can lead to it, what are your risk factors, what does it look like, there's pictures, and then gives treatment options. And it's you know not brand specific, so it gives a lot of different options for folks that are um, depending on what's on their formulary and what's available to the patient. Fantastic. And if you want Wooden Care Pro, it's only $49.99. It's in the App Store. It's on Google Play. So you can definitely go there, whether you're a physician, a clinician. We have had some patients actually download it as well, um, because we're still hopefully more and more wound care professionals will start getting or healthcare professionals will start getting wound care certified um, because we have such an influx of especially diabetic patients and chronic, ki chronic kidney disease patients even coming into the mix and a, a huge influx of people who have been sedentary for so long that as we have an aging population, we have more of these types of situations in which we need healthcare professionals that are trained in wound care. And so that's it. And we're really excited about Wound Care Pro. And at least in the meantime, it's something that uh, physicians and clinicians, as well as patients alike, can end up using as a really important resource. And especially for patients to be able to use to uh, be able to generate really good questions to ask their healthcare professionals to improve the care that they're receiving as well, which is great. So make sure you can download it if you can. But just remember the advice and views that are offered here um, on this particular episode, they're that of nurse practitioner Ann Walsh, as well as myself. Uh, make sure you do not act on any advice offered here without the explicit consent of your own healthcare provider. Really, really important. Yes. And thank you so much for joining us. Any final thoughts on venous ulcers, final takeaways? Yes, yeah, so I was going to say too, if somebody has, let's say, heart failure, you know, they may not be able to take all that fluid we're sending from the legs back to the heart. So that's why you have to look at the whole picture, what's going on with the person. So with those individuals, we try to use something lighter compression. There's different sleeves for compression, give them very light compression um, versus these wraps that give a lot of compression therapy to help heal a wound, but may inadvertently send that fluid back to a compromised heart that can't handle it. You know, and then we, we look also, do we need to go up into water pills to help get rid of that extra fluid? So it's sort of, you know, a team approach, looking at everything, get the person up and moving, 
and take it from there. And we do have a quick question. Heinz, go ahead and unmute. Heinz is in our live studio audience. Go ahead and ask nurse practitioner Ann Walsh your question. Good day. I, I would show my face, but I'm cooking. So, you know, you don't need to okay. watch, watch me cook. I'm one of those rare individuals that has pad and venous insufficiency. So I do wear compression socks. It's not so much as a comment as a, or a question as a comment, but uh, I got zapped by radiation. So I got a double whammy with the artery and then the veins, but I've had the treatments since then and I'm in pretty good hands. Um, but I did have the, the, the veins down by my ankle, just as you described, uh, really nicely I have that, you know, that brownish um, skin and, but at the same time, I'm being treated for all that. Last thing I got was a Ver Verathena and uh, I'm scheduled for another one. But uh, the, the compression socks, I've never had a problem putting them on. There is, there is a way to put them on and they're not tight. Keep in mind, they're not tight. They're, they're sort of uh, loose, but the doctor okayed, or he's the one that told me to wear them. So I'm one of those rare few that does wear them though. That's great. And sometimes just moisturizing your legs helps ease on pulling on the stocking too, just with the A and D ointment or Vaseline or something, just so it's a little lubricated when you're trying to pull the stocking on. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, nurse practitioner Ann Walsh. We you're really welcome. appreciate you always donating your time, answering questions. Um, so many questions that I always have each week. Um, about all kinds of different wound care. So we appreciate you being here. Anyone who's watching, make sure to like um, our videos, like our channel, subscribe to our channel, get notified every single week. You don't want to miss an episode of Nurse Practitioner Ann Walsh because she is providing some incredible information that'll not only help treat those wounds, but also prevent them. And if you are someone who is diabetic, you have chronic kidney disease, um, you have heart failure, you have peripheral artery disease, even heart disease, this is definitely something that you want to tune into each week to make sure that you can stay on the ahead of anything that might transpire. So we really appreciate you, Nurse Practitioner Ann Walsh, for all of your time. And again, go ahead and download Wound Care Pro if you have more questions that you need answered. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye now.